So uh, just a reminder, since we talked about the themes, um, and you know which ones the countries are, but um, a reminder that we're going to collect quantitative data with uh, almost 3,500 people. So it's important to remember that um, this is an individual survey, not a household survey. So we're going back and forth on this. But um, while there are some components uh, re uh, relevant to the household, it's, uh, it's very much a targeted survey, you know, for individuals only. Um, so um, the design process um, was uh, the following, is the following, as it's still on, very much ongoing. So um, the uh, work package lead developed their, their framework and gave, a, gave, gave me some guidance. And uh, I came up with a, um, a first preliminary, very much preliminary draft, which was already very long. It was, uh, there was some back and forth and some, some amendments made to this draft, but then, um, then we convened the uh, survey design panel. So um, in, in each country, we invited a group of experts to become part of this design panel. Uh, so these were um, municipal actors, academics, representatives of NGOs, CSOs, and uh, where, wherever possible, also representative of the displaced. Um, so these panels have happened now in three out of four countries. Jordan's is actually um, scheduled for tomorrow. That was really in interesting. So we shared the survey with all of, all of them, invited them to provide written feedback, and then convened them for a half-day workshop where we uh, went through the tool in detail and all the different sections, you know, and discussed indicators, conceptual understandings of certain things, and also, you know, which, which questions could be cut, which questions were missing when it comes to, you know, quantifying things like uh, well-being and self-reliance. We will, um, very soon I begin starting, I, I believe starting next week, whole, uh, whole survey design focus groups with displaced persons in, in all of these countries, in urban and sometimes in camp context, where we ask them, you know, when you think of self-reliance, when you think of well-being, what does that, what does that mean to you? What do you think is, is really crucial for, for getting there? So it's not just us coming with our frameworks and imposing those on these people, but uh, in a way that is also um, a way for them to co-design the survey. And, and then we go back to the drawing board, integrate all this feedback and hopefully have a tool that uh, translates conceptual understandings of well-being into indicators for measurement, um, examines the building blocks of self-reliance, and uh, yeah, and pulls all of this together in a way that will allow us to um, have a harmonized tool that is basically the same for all contexts. So we can draw cross-country comparisons that also has uh, country-specific modules, choices and options where necessary. So taking all the, uh, all the input from work packages one and two, we obviously end up with a very, very big tool, right? So we're asking necessarily, we, have, we need to have profiling. So we ask about basic information about the respondent and their household. We ask about the displacement journey for the displaced. Physical and natural and bodily well-being is basically um, surveys, if you will, on health, on housing, on assets social capital and well-being, we, we look into their networks, their political integration, if you will, what they do in their free time, you know, how well are they integrated socially. The uh, livelihoods strategies and economic well-being section has, uh, is, is very large because we're not just interested in, in a snapshot of their livelihoods at the moment, but we'd like to, to understand these, you know, while also um, taking into account their previous skills and previous lives lived experiences, right? How has what they've done in the past and the skills they have acquired in the past influenced their trajectory in their current place of displacement? But we don't just want to know what they do. Um, we also want to know um, how that influences their well-being. How do they like it? Do they, do they think they're being paid fairly? Um, can we say that they have decent work? Um, but of course, in, when we look at their livelihood strategies, we can't just look at work, right? Because we also need to understand, you know, what, what else might input into their financial well-being, such as remittances, aid received. So it's, it's, another, it's another big chapter, of course, to capture. And finally, we, we also want to, want to understand now that we know them so well, right? We, we also want to understand what their, what their aspirations are. Are they going to you know, stay put and, uh, or do they have in, intentions to remigrate? Um, what are their preferences between a camp and an urban setting? What do they actually know about each other? And how are these, how are these choices made? Um, if indeed there are choices, you know, when it comes to settling in a camp or an urban environment. 
So um, again, I, I'd be very happy to share with all of you the, the draft tool as it stands. Um, but this is really all I wanted to say about um, sort of the themes we're addressing. The tool as it stands right now, I've, 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 we've sort of run through it. It's, it's, it's longer than, uh, it takes longer than 90 minutes. So it will need to be cut. But um, we'll, we'll need to figure out where we can cut while still getting at these very important um, aspects that were just described by our colleagues. So um, the challenges we have, of course, if we, um, you know, if we think of this as aggression, but you know, outcome and um, and uh, and independent variables, we also need to quantify somehow with that tool. We need to quantify well-being. I don't think it's been done in this context before. We of course need to quantify self-reliance, um, and then of course um, we need to um, we need to tackle the issue of sampling. How do we sample them? So we want to sample 380. Um, displaced in urban and 380 displaced in camp environments. So in camps, it should be pretty straightforward, but how do we, how do we sample them in urban environments? So I'd love to talk to, to the people here about how they might have achieved this in the past in a replicable fashion across different contexts. So we want to sample the first half randomly and the second half we will target people who have a work-related source of income. This is, uh, this is in order for us to actually have a sample that um, you know, large enough to draw some solid conclusions on on livelihoods uh, for for work package two. Um, so we're just uh, trying to figure out how to do this. We were thinking of doing a satellite based sort of random walk geographic sample with random starting points, but that might not work if the um, displaced population is hidden or too rarefied to find. So uh, something we'd love to discuss with you. In terms of timelines, the survey design panels this month, focus groups next month, and we're hoping to finalize the tool in late November and start piloting in Afghanistan and Kenya in December, and then begin the, the data collection in those two countries with Jordan and Ethiopia happen, happening in a second wave in early 2021.